Sunday morning. Thank you for joining the Unity Church of God in Christ Sunday School Review on this Sunday. We welcome you and thank you for joining us today. Praise God. The topic of our review, of our discussion, will be the bread of life. Again, our topic today is the bread of life. This is a lesson number 10 for those of you who follow along with us weekly. Our Bible bases are the context and content of our discussion will be found in John, the sixth chapter, verses 22 through 35 on this eighth day, the month of May, 2022. I thank God for the leaders of Unity Church of God in Christ, our pastor, Pastor Anthony Rogers, and our First Lady, First Lady Charlene Rogers. Although I have welcomed you, I thank God for you. You are Facebook friends. You are YouTube friends. You who make up the entire Unity community. I thank God for you joining today, and you are at the right place to receive the blessings from the Lord. We thank God for our Sunday School Superintendent, Deacon Joe Daniels, and his companion, Sister Annie Daniels, who works closely by his side. And I thank God for the privilege to share his word with you by way of Sunday School on this day. Praise God. I'd also like to say Happy Mother's Day. Again, Happy Mother's Day 2022. I thank God for who he is. I thank God for the mothers that exist in each of our lives. I thank God for the experience, hallelujah, that mothers provide to their children, both those who are among us now and those who are on the other side. Again, happy Mother's Day to every mother. Praise God. Our memory verse today is found in John the sixth chapter, verse 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. That is the King James Version. The New International Version reads as follows. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Praise God. We thank God for the declarative words of the scripture. Today that state never, if we partake, never shall we experience hunger and thirst again. Hallelujah. I thank God for his word. And as we explore this Sunday's Sunday school lesson, we will, con hallelujah, we will expand our understanding of the memory verse. Our lesson aim, by the end of this lesson, we will, number one, explain why Jesus is the bread of life. Number two, we will trust that Jesus is our bread of life. And three, list the ways that we can share the bread of life with others. Again, we will explain, trust, and list. This is our lesson aim. This is a goal to every Sunday school participant, to every believer who is turning in today to explain why, again, Jesus is the bread of life, to explain that, hallelujah, to anyone who inquires, and then to trust. Sometimes we have to explain and get clarity for ourselves. And when we do, then we can trust that Jesus is, we may know who or why he is, but then trusting and believing that he can be that for us. And when we trust and believe that he can be that bread of life for us, hallelujah, he can also be that bread of life for others. 
And when we know that, then we are able to list, to articulate, to identify ways in which we can share Jesus being that bread, Jesus being that life to others we come in contact with today. I thank God for the lessons that come weekly that challenge us by way of lesson aim to achieve a goal. Hallelujah. And to partner, praise God, with he that leads us to meet and achieve that goal. Our Bible truth, our Bible application, and Bible learning are as follows. The Bible truth notes that God in Christ is our source for everything. Our Bible application to understand how to trust Jesus for every need in our life. And our Bible learning, trust Jesus as the bread of life and provider of our every need. Again, let's pay close attention to our Bible truth to our Bible application and our Bible learning to make it personal, hallelujah, to apply it individually so that we can maximize, hallelujah, the power and the will of God in our lives and in the lives of others to maximize the benefit of being a child of the king, and one who also believes in the power and the authority of his word. Praise God. Subject word association. Today we're talking about the bread of life. And we know that bread naturally is something that is meant for food, sustenance, livelihood. That also applies spiritually as well sustenance and livelihood, spiritual food. And then life is the condition that distinguishes animals or plants for inorganic matter. We're talking about inorganic matter, matter which is not derived from living organisms. Hallelujah. When you're living, this includes the capacity or the ability for growth, for reproduction, for functional activity, hallelujah, and the continual change in we, the believer, hallelujah, we who trust God, he can change us, hallelujah, as we live until we die. Praise God. We thank God for subject word association and the bread of life, although we're just talking about bread and life. On today, I'd like us to review the meaning of short term. As we live this life, as we establish goals and aims for our lives, there are times when we are focused on short term goals. I want to make sure as believers, as children of God, as people who trust Jesus, that we do not limit ourselves to the short term. Hallelujah. We use today's lesson to expand our heart and mind to receive everything God has for us and that we open our eyes, our ears, our heart to understand that it is not specific to the short term. Short term represents things that are temporary. Temporary represents things that only last for a limited period of time. That those things that are not permanent. Hallelujah. We think about short term to break it down into natural understanding. We, identify short-term or temporary as a person who is being employed on a temporary basis. Hallelujah. An office worker, for example, who looks for employment through a employment agency and or through a contracting 
uh, facility where they provide work for a short term. Hallelujah. Temporary represents non-permanent. It is only effective for a period of time. Again, short term. Let's make sure as we read God's word, as we explore who he is, as we diligently work to seek and find him, we do not limit ourselves to seeking him for short-term solutions. We do not limit ourselves to seeking God for the temporary. Hallelujah. But we expand our heart and our mind to seek him for the eternal. Praise God. As we get in today's, in today's lesson, I'd like to review some background information. Praise God. You know, Elder Canada likes to go through background scriptures. I'll do my best <laughs> to be quick about it on today. We know that Jesus feeds the 5,000 and he walks on water in the verses leading up to our scripture text today. Beginning in chapter 5, hallelujah, although our lesson takes place in chapter 6, beginning in chapter 5, we read about the healing at the pool of Bethesda, where disabled people gathered. Talking about disabled people, there were people that were lame, those who were blind, even those who were crippled. In this passage of scripture and our reference to the fifth chapter, there was one individual who had been an invalid for over 38 years. He mentioned to Jesus that he did not have anyone to help him into the pool when it was stirred for healing. Therefore, he missed out every time an opportunity came for his condition to be addressed. Hallelujah. And then came time for healing. And the importance of it is he was healed, but he was not certain of who healed him. He saw Jesus again, and Jesus spoke to another need in his life. Hallelujah. Just not the fact that he had been an invalid. He had been healed from that, but when he came in contact with Jesus a second time, Jesus was speaking to the need that was prevalent in his life. Hallelujah. The first time it was the need that he be healed. So he spoke to that condition. Hallelujah. But the second time he came in contact with Jesus, Jesus was looking beyond the temporary for the future and let him know it was necessary for him to stop and to come out of his sin, because if he did not, something worse, hallelujah, than being an invalid would take place in his life. In that fifth chapter, there were those who questioned the authority of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus made clarification in that fifth chapter, that he and his father are always working. There were those who were upset that the man was healed on the Sabbath, but Jesus let them know that he and his father are always working seven days a week, 24 hours a day to meet the need of his people, be it sin or sickness. Hallelujah. People of God, I encourage you to read his word for yourself. Read the entire book of John, just not the sixth chapter. It's best to read the chapters preceding and following to get a thorough and complete understanding of the power of God and how Jesus can manifest himself in your life for your benefit Hallelujah, that extends beyond the short term and the temporary. 
as we go into that sixth chapter, as I referenced earlier about background, we see that Jesus feeds the 5,000. Hallelujah. He was on the Sea of Galilee, equal, equating to the Sea of Tiberias. At that time, in that sixth chapter, we see great crowds following Jesus because they saw signs that he had performed miracles that had taken place. In this instance, in the sixth chapter, in the beginning, we see the Jewish Passover was near. Therefore, the crowds were also large because of that. Jesus had a following because of the miracles he performed, but also because of what was about to take place in the area. Jesus being compassionate as he was, saw the great crowns and he knew that there would be a need, hallelujah, to feed the individuals that were seeking him, the individuals that were following him. There would be a need to feed the natural man, a need to feed the natural woman. People of God, let us not mistake that Jesus sees our needs. He looks at us regardless of the crowd or quantity of people and identifies what is important for sustainment at that moment. Jesus saw their need then as he does today. Hallelujah. Again, regardless of the crowd, regardless of the number of people, Jesus sees your need. Hallelujah. He was concerned about what the people would eat. <laughs> and so he asked the disciples a question. The disciples were more concerned about the quantity, but Jesus was concerned about the need. Again, the disciples were concerned about the quantity of people and the limitations of food they had access to, but Jesus was more concerned about the need. Hallelujah. The disciples identified a boy with five small burly loaves and two small fish. The scriptures note about 5,000 men were there, but it doesn't reference women. So in my mind, I'm going to say that we state that over 5,000 were fed, but again, these were women. Excuse me, these were men. Women were not mentioned. And in my little mind, I imagine many more than the 5,000 that are referenced. Talk about barley. Barley was eaten by those who did not have a lot those who could not make bread, those who did not have access to wheat to make bread. Hallelujah, which lets us know those who were following Jesus had multiple needs. In this instance of Jesus feeding the 5,000, he blessed the food and gave thanks, and they ate, and there were leftovers. There were so many leftovers, 12 baskets full of food and bread were taken up after the 5,000 plus had eaten. Jesus noted to them that nothing should be wasted. People of God, as we look at this, let us make note that Jesus can supply all of our need without waste. Hallelujah. We also, in that sixth chapter, learn of Jesus walking on water. Praise God. Miracles in advance of what he was going to do for those in the scripture text for our lesson today. Our scripture text is specific to John, the sixth chapter, verses 22 through 
35. My review of the background was specific to verses 1 through 21 of that sixth chapter. Part one of today's breakdown, part one of our analysis of Jesus being the bread of life is the fact that they were searching for Jesus. Part one gives insight to their search of Jesus. Again, part one is specific to verses 22 through 25. Searching for Jesus. This takes place in Capernaum. Capernaum is located on the northwest shore of the Sea of Galilee. This was a central location for the ministry of Jesus. In Capernaum, the first disciples were called Peter, Andrew, James, and John. In this location or proximity, Jesus performed many miracles in this region. <laughs> and although he performed many or several miracles, many or some still did not believe. He fed over 5,000, and it was an awesome thing. Hallelujah. And because it was such an awesome thing, there were some who wanted to make him king right there on the spot. Because he fed 5,000 and because he performed miracles in their mind, they knew he represented and or he was a prophet sent from God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> They wanted to make him king, but was it for the right reasons? Some want Jesus as their king even today, but is it for the right reasons? The people were, at that time, under Roman rule. They believed Jesus would deliver them from Roman domination as God did the children of Israel. Hallelujah. The people who witnessed and heard the miracles previously referenced of him feeding the 5,000 were now in search of Jesus. They wanted something more from him. These were people who needed Jesus naturally. They needed him for their personal deliverance, hallelujah, from Roman rule, and they also needed him for food. These were people in need. Do we only seek Jesus for what we are facing now, as these people were doing? Are we only seeking Jesus for the present need, for the temporary, for the short term? Hallelujah. These people were seeking Jesus to partially fix their temporary or their current state. Partial satisfaction. Temporary. <laughs> when something is partial, it is only existing in part. When something is partial, it is incomplete. Glory to God. Jesus, knowing his time was not yet come, he went away to a mountain. It was not time for him to be made king. And he also realized that that the time was not appropriate because they were seeking him for the wrong reasons. Additional work was necessary. Therefore, he removed himself from the scene. People of God, let's take heed. Let's ensure we are seeking Jesus again for the right thing because we do not want him to remove himself from the scene as we seek him for the wrong things. In their search, they realized something had taken place. 
They were seeking Jesus and they surveyed the land. These individuals surveyed the area, realizing that something had changed. Hallelujah. Jesus was no longer there. He was and could not be found. Not only was Jesus not there, but the boat nor the disciples were there. Again, we're talking about the 22nd through the 25th verse of that 6th chapter. People of God, the disciples had already gone to find where they thought Jesus was. <laughs> but in their course to find Jesus, they needed help en route to where they thought he was. Thus we see and read about Jesus walking on the water to meet and calm their anxiety. These people finding Jesus, they could not, nor could they locate his disciples. These individuals saw some boats <laughs> and boarded them and went to the other side of the shore of Capernaum to find Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Praise God. They acknowledged him as a rabbi because of his ability to teach, because some had witnessed him in the synagogue and the temple teaching. But again, what they were concerned about was when did you get here? They were questioning Jesus. They traveled to find Jesus, and when they found him, they wanted to know when he arrived. More specifically, and I'm paraphrasing, putting into my own word and imagining, they wanted to know how did you leave without our knowledge, and where did you go? without us knowing about it. When, hallelujah, did you leave? <laughs> these believers, these followers were questioning Jesus about the when, the why, the how. These things we discussed last week, they wanted to know when, why, and how did you leave? <laughs> They basically wanted to know, did they miss anything? Did they miss any handouts? Did they miss any miracles? Did they miss anything? People of God, when we are searching, at times we too question Jesus. We too question God. Hallelujah. Do you ask him why, how, or what? he is doing if it does not align with your understanding. Just as they did then, we do the same things now. Praise God. Part two, part two of Jesus being that bread of life is talking about the perishable food. The perishable food. The perishable food is referenced and based upon John the 6th chapter, verses 26 through 31. Again, perishable food. When you have something perishable, it is likely to or will decay or go bad quickly. Jesus speaks to our needs and he knows our intentions. He knows the intent of the heart even when we try to cover or mask our intent. Hallelujah. As we look at that 26th verse, in that 6th chapter, Jesus immediately spoke to them. He noted, you are searching me and trying to find me only for food. Not miracles, but food. Again, these were people who did not have much. They were poor, 
and they were searching Jesus to satisfy their immediate need, which was hunger. Hallelujah. Jesus realized that they did not know who he truly was because of the limitations associated with their search. Do you know who Jesus really is? Or are you limited by your current situation and your status? Are you limited by your search? Jesus explained to them in that 27th verse to broaden their perspective, to expand their focus beyond their current or their temporary need. Hallelujah. To expand their focus beyond the short term. Jesus wants us, us being you, us being me, to expand our focus to expand our perspective from the present to the entire roadmap. Hallelujah. What is present? What is down the road? What is our future? And how can we seek him for everything? Do not only work for food. He provides clarification Again, we may be seeking Jesus for the wrong things, hallelujah, but he provides clarification. He loves us so much even though our search sometimes is off, even though our focus is off and we're not seeing clearly he is patient with us, hallelujah. He lets them know do not only work for food that promotes the temporary, but look for food that promotes the eternal. Hallelujah. <laughs> look for something that satisfies beyond the present, something that satisfies the present, the future, and our existence in eternity, look for something that is satisfying for all time. Hallelujah. For our existence, both now, the future, and forever. God has given Jesus the ability to speak to the things that are eternal to speak to the things that are present, hallelujah, and to speak to the things that are the future. Only Jesus, the Son of God, can speak to these things. God has given him the ability to speak to these things, hallelujah, to change things around, and to work on our behalf so that our present, our future, and our eternal are navigated and solidified by and through Jesus. Hallelujah. God has given him the ability and provisions to make sure that our very existence is rooted and grounded in him again the future the press excuse me again the present the future and our eternity jesus can provide this eternal life our food because god has given him his seal of approval he has given jesus the ability to make this offer on his behalf. <laughs> and you might ask, what is this offer? God has granted Jesus the approval to offer and grant life eternal. Jesus has the ability to focus on both the natural and the spiritual. 
people of God, the natural is temporary, but the spirit is eternal. I ask you today, what is your focus? Are you limiting what God can do by your focus? There is no limit to what God can do, but we limit based upon our focus. Just as they were seeking Jesus, they were seeking him for only temporary satisfaction. They were hungry and they wanted to be fed. <laughs> A limited focus. It equates to limited benefits and limited blessings. Hallelujah. And being limited does not equate to eternal. Many references of scripture designates God's seal of approval. We're still talking about that 27th verse. At the baptism of Jesus in Matthew, the third chapter, as soon as Jesus was baptized, it notes he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. <laughs> this is a sign of the seal of approval. Jesus does the same to us. The seal of approval is his spirit as 2 Corinthians 1.22 designates. They listened to what Jesus was saying. He was speaking to their need for the present, but he was also speaking to their need for the future. He wanted them to focus on the eternal. He wanted them to focus on the forever. You may be struggling now. <laughs> you may be caught up in the present, but people of God, I ask you, what about later? What about your future? What work are you executing? What work are you putting forth to speak to the later in your life? What are you doing to impact the later of your life? What must we do? What can we do? They asked Jesus in the 28th and the 29th verse. What can we do to meet the requirements of God for the eternal? In this instance, there is absolutely nothing wrong for their ignorance. There is absolutely nothing wrong with their not knowing. But there is something wrong when you don't ask, when you don't seek for clarification, when you remain ignorant. Hallelujah. If you do not understand, pray. Ask for clarification. Seek Jesus for an answer. He will respond as he did then. He will now. Jesus answered them. Seek the one who is sent. Believe on the one who is sent. Believe on who God has sent. The work of God in our lives is that we believe in Jesus. We're talking about work for the eternal. Again, the work of God in our individual lives is that we believe in Jesus. This is all the work that we have to do is to believe because Jesus has already done everything else. Have you been working? Is your belief and faith partial? Is it temporary? Is it limited for the short term? People of God, I ask you, what 
is your work of faith? What is the work of God in your life? Is it again, and it may be redundant, but it is intentionally so. Is it temporary? Is it short term? Or are you thinking about the future through your eternity? I thank God for his word today because he lets us know that we can go to him for everything, for the present, for the future, and the eternal. We find that as we read and as he continues to collaborate and speak to and answer their questions that they began to listen. <laughs> they were listening, but it was evident they were not believing. Hallelujah. You may ask Canada, why do you say that? But cause they asked Jesus for a sign. Again, we're in the 30th through the 31st verse. They asked him for a sign. They said, give us a sign so that we can see and believe. When we receive a word of instruction, what is the first thing we ask? This is applicable to preachers, teachers. <laughs> we hear them say it. It's said often. It was applicable then and it is applicable now. People, we are no different I don't care about your title. I don't care about who you are. We are no different. After reading the scripture and God doing so many great things in our lives, we at times continue to want a sign. He provides us daily with the ability to awake, to do things for ourselves, to experience a new day, to breathe, to live, to go to work, to do minor things. Hallelujah. We talk about, I describe these are minor things. Some of us look at these things as things we expect <laughs> God to do for us. But as we learn in that fifth chapter, there were people at that pool of Bethesda who were sick for many years. As we learned in last week's Sunday school lesson, there was a man who was blind, not because of his sin or his parents, but that the gift of God, the power of God may be manifest in his life. Hallelujah. So again, we ask for signs. Although God does great things, we still at times want a sign. Hallelujah. Again, we are no different than they were back there. Jesus performed a miracle in their presence, but they yet wanted a sign. I ask you, are you asking for a sign or something to identify it if it's Jesus or his father really working in your life or on your behalf. Are you asking for signs? <laughs> in that 30th through 31st verse, these believers who followed Jesus, who went to the other side of the lake, who took their time and put effort forth, they questioned they referred to their ancestors, their forefathers, who God brought out of bondage. Noting he led or he fed them bread from heaven. <laughs> These individuals referenced their ancestors or their forefathers. These individuals had just experienced Jesus the day before, taking a few loaves of bread and fish and feeding thousands, but yet they wanted a sign. They referenced their forefathers who were stubborn and did not 
follow the instructions of God. Their forefathers who God delivered, who God fed, who God made provision for, who he gave them drink and saved them from various diseases. They reference their forefathers who yet disobeyed and did not trust God. These individuals who seen the miracle of Jesus again were questioning. They were listening, but they were not believing. Hallelujah. They used these individuals who were in the wilderness after being delivered out of the land of Egypt to justify their request for a sign. As for stated, we do the same thing, but I'd like to be specific. Are you asking for signs today? And if you're asking for signs, what are you basing it upon? Are you basing it upon your lack of trust and belief? Hallelujah. I tell you, get to know Jesus. Establish a relationship with him. Every week we talk about being real with him. Establishing a real relationship with him. Communicating with him. Knowing him as your savior. Knowing him as your God. Hallelujah. When you know him, when you trust him, when you believe on him, you do not need a sign. Hallelujah. His seal of approval is operating in your life when you know him, when you believe him, when you trust him. His spirit is that sign or that seal of approval. Just as God gave his son Jesus his seal and sign of approval by the Spirit in form of a dove, he does the same thing for us. Mark 16, 17, and 18 notes, these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and they shall drink any deadly thing, and it will not harm them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Hallelujah. These are the signs that follow those who believe in and trust Jesus. If you're looking for a sign, look in that book of Mark. Hallelujah. And make sure that your life is operating with the signs that follow them that believe. Glory to God. As we explore part three of today's lesson, better than manna. <laughs> part three, the bread of life. As we break down our understanding of it, it is better than manna. And that is the 32nd through the 35th verse of that sixth chapter. Jesus clarifies the fact that he is aware of their misunderstanding. Again, as they seek him, he is patient. He clarifies. He listens. He speaks to the need, both naturally and spiritually. I thank God for his patience. I thank God for his long-suffering toward us. Jesus, in this instance, realized that there was a misunderstanding and he needed to help the people have a complete or thorough understanding. Again, I thank God for his word, for the fact that we can read it for ourselves, for the fact that there are multiple or several interpretations we have the King James Version, the New King James Version, 
the new international version and the amplified version to name a few. If we read God's word for ourself, there should be no misunderstanding. If we witness and share God's word, there should be no misunderstanding. Hallelujah. But again, I thank God for the patience of his son. Because when there is for those who are diligently seeking him, he provides clarification. He notes that Moses did not give that bread from heaven, but that it was his father. And his father gives true bread from heaven. <laughs> he clarified to them that what their forefathers and what their ancestors experienced in the wilderness was a foretaste of what God had in store for his people. It was a foretaste. It was temporary. Hallelujah. It was for the short term. Jesus spoke to their ancestors' need for the short term. Hallelujah. People of God, what we experience today is only a foretaste. A foretaste means a sampling. Hallelujah. What we are experiencing today is a sampling of what God has in store for us. It's a rhetorical question, but I'm curious. Are you satisfied with the foretaste or a sample? Or do you want to experience the whole thing? Everything God has in store for us is specific to those who love him. The true bread of heaven, Jesus continues to explain God sins from heaven. It is just not for a moment or a temporary interval of time. It is for eternity. He clarified the fact that the man in those days was temporary sustainment. The people were grumbling in the wilderness and God satisfied their temporary need. The bread that Jesus was referring to is true or genuine and it satisfies beyond the present it satisfies beyond the short term. It satisfies beyond the temporary through eternity. The true bread is desig not designated for those people, hallelujah, in the wilderness. But the true bread is designated for everyone, hallelujah. Again, what they experienced in the wilderness was a limited version of a foretaste. And it was only specific to those people. The bread that Jesus is referring to, the bread that his father, the true bread, it is for everyone, regardless of your status regardless of your financial condition, regardless of your mental health, you may be crippled, you may be impaired. Hallelujah. Oh, we fall into many instances and many categories. The followers of Jesus are many. Glory to God. And they are made up of various people and individuals from several backgrounds. Again, you might be handicapped, you may not be, you may be mentally capped, and you may not be. Whatever your situation is, the true bread of life is for you, your offspring, those you know, your neighbors, your family members. It is intended for all. Hallelujah. Regardless of when, 
<laughs> True bread is there. It is not limited to your situation, but is applicable to everything. In that 32 through 33rd verse, Jesus was providing an answer that would satisfy their hunger. He was providing an answer that would satisfy their need. They were seeking and they sought Jesus based upon the fact again that they were hungry. But Jesus saw beyond the limitations of their search and gave them something that would change their trajectory, something that would change their life forever. I ask you today, are you hungering and thirsting for righteousness sake? Are you satisfied? Hallelujah. If you're not satisfied and you're still hungering and thirsting, let's ensure we're seeking Jesus. Let's ensure we're seeking that true manna and that bread from heaven. Are you seeking the bread from heaven that satisfies for eternity? Or are you only sampling a foretaste? This is a question that only you can answer. In that 32nd through 35th verse, they began to actually listen. <laughs> they were hearing, but they were not listening. They were hearing, but they were not receiving. They were hearing, but they were not opening their hearts. They were caught and stuck on the temporary. They were focused on the short term, but Jesus answered their questions and by him being patient, him speaking to their need, him answering their question, they were now listening and believing. And because they were both listening and believing, they were now in a position to receive, to receive and to eat the bread that God gives to satisfy the heart, the mind, and the soul. These individuals were now positioned to truly eat. People of God, I'm asking you today, how are you positioned? Are you positioned to feast or eat on the temporary? Are you feasting and eating on the foretaste of or are you doing the work to eat the bread of eternal life? Jesus let them know as he clarified that he was the bread of life. I mentioned that they were understanding, they were listening, and they were believing. We learned a few weeks ago about the Samaritan woman who wanted to receive the water so that she could never thirst again. These individuals who were seeking Jesus after he fed the 5,000 were now listening, believing, trusting, and seeking how they could, hallelujah, do the works and receive the true bread of heaven. And because they were asking, because they were believing, he let them know he was that bread of life. And that if they come to him, they would never hunger or thirst again. Hallelujah. The scripture notes they would never thirst again that they would be completely or wholly, W-H-O-L-L-Y, satisfied with and through Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> he let them know there is no 
pay required. Why? Because he was going to pay the price. Hallelujah. No long hours, no long work days was necessary to partake in this bread of life because Jesus had already done the work. All we have to do in our work is to believe and trust in him. And he will satisfy every need, both naturally and spiritually. In this world of uncertainty, I would strongly recommend you seek the bread of life. In a world of skyrocketing prices of few food, fuel, housing. <laughs> in a world in which temporary satisfaction and sustainment is winning, I recommend and strongly suggest that you seek the eternal. Seek Jesus who can speak to your current and future. Do you know anyone? other than Jesus Christ the righteous, who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything that you can ask or think of him? If you can identify someone else, let me know. <laughs> People of God, I recommend and strongly suggest that you lay aside the weight and the sin that easily besets us the sin that easily throws us off course, and we seek Jesus, the true bread of life, because he is the author, he is the finisher, he is the alpha, he is the omega, he is the past, he is the present, and he is the future. He is our eternity. I recommend you seek Jesus while he may be found because as we learned last week, night is coming when no man can work. Hallelujah. And he may not be found. For those of you who follow us weekly, our lesson next week will be the Good Shepherd. It will be found in John the 10th chapter, verses 7 through 18. And it will be lesson number 11 on the 15th of May. Our prayer today is, Father in heaven, thank you for supplying my every need. I am so grateful to you. You are my source. You are my portion. You are my provider. Hallelujah. I look to you for everything I need, and your word promises that if I seek your kingdom and your righteousness, that all other things will be added unto me. Help me to be confident in whatever state I am in, and to always give thanks, for this is your will concerning me. I pray that my life will be a testimony of your goodness and draw others unto you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Please remember to give. Your giving options are displayed at the bottom of the screen and tune in promptly at 11 a.m. for a powerful, impactful word of God. Be blessed and seek Jesus, the true bread of life, as you go about your lesson aim this week. Praise God and be blessed.